I made a list of 10 things over here on the left, and uh, these 10 items I want to run through and I want to figure out where we can best place them on this uh, matter map. And along the way, hopefully you get some uh, hints and clues that will help you pass a mastery quiz. So let's just run through these top to bottom. Let's start with light. Does light pass the first test of matter? Does light have mass? Does light take up space? Well, um, let's just use one of those. Let's use volume. Does light take up space? No, it doesn't. So light does not go on the matter map. Light is not matter. Okay? So there's one down, nine to go. Let's talk about gold. Where does gold fit? Well, if you look around and you find a uh, periodic table, gold is on the periodic table, so it is an element. So that's the best place to put it. Gold is an element. Uh, that's a terrible E. There we go. So, yes, you could say gold is an element. It's also a pure substance. It's also matter. Anything that fits anything below matter on this is, of course, matter. Okay, so what's next on our list? Waves. Um, kids ask me during this quiz, they say, Mr. Mock, what about a water wave? That's made of water. And I say, yeah, water waves are made of water. But they forget that the wave is just a type of energy traveling through matter. So the wave itself is not matter. So the wave is a disturbance that travels through matter. So waves are not matter. Hope you don't think that was a trick question. Okay, so any type of wave you want to think of, um, be it electromagnetic waves like radio waves that can go through space or earthquake waves that go through the earth, the wave itself is not matter. Okay, this one's kind of weird. Alum. What in the heck is alum? Well, uh, we don't, you know, people don't commonly know what alum is. I mean, they think, well, I've heard old people say that word before, alum. And let me just tell you a little bit about alum. Alum is a compound. And it has a, it follows the rule that if it has a formula, it is a pure substance. And what is the formula for alum? Well, it is potassium aluminum sulfate. So whether or not you know what alum is, if it has a formula, then it is a compound. So what if I give you a quiz and you're not sure if it has a formula or not? Well, you have to look at the other choices in the quiz and see if you can narrow it down that way. For example, what if I put baking powder? And you might go, okay, well, is baking powder a mixture or is it a pure substance? If you don't know, you can start to use the properties to try and guess. Because you go, all right, well, a box of baking powder, it's all this white powder, so it is homogenous, but does that mean it's a mixture? Well, maybe, maybe not. Um, but baking powder is something that's not separatable without a chemical process, which means that baking powder is actually a compound. So if you're not familiar with them, you might have to use the other choices to narrow down, or you might just have to uh, make a wild guess. And then let's go with bleach. What is bleach? Bleach, if you go to the store and buy a bottle of bleach, that is a mixture. What kind of mixture? It is a homogenous mixture because it looks the same all over. Every part of the bottle inside looks the same. But if you're thinking of just the chemical bleach, what makes bleach bleach? It's actually a solution of bleach in water. So when I think of bleach, I think of this. I think of uh, calcium, was it hypochlorite or chlorite? I can't remember. But this is the formula for bleach, CaClO2. So bleach has this formula. So bleach is actually a compound. But if someone were to say bleach in a bottle that you get from the grocery store, then that is a homogenous mixture because it's a solution of this chemical mixed into water. So some of them can be a little tricky. All right, now let's talk about paper. What is paper? Paper, you look at it and you say, okay, it's homogenous. It looks the same all over, so it, maybe it's a pure substance. You're just not sure between the two. Well, there is another little tip or trick that you can use. Paper comes from wood pulp, and wood pulp came from, yes, you guessed it, wood. And wood used to be alive, which means it was made of cells. And cells have different parts all over. So, you know, cells have, uh, plant cells have cell walls, and they have a nucleus, and they have little ribosomes and all these other little doohickeys inside. So they are definitely, definitely 
mixtures. Now, uh, paper, what would you argue between homogeneous and heterogeneous? What would you say? I would say from a distance it looks homogeneous, but up close you can tell that there's little grains to the paper. It's actually a heterogeneous mixture. That's kind of a tough one. And then let's go to Kool-Aid. How do you make Kool-Aid? Well, you take Kool-Aid powder and you take sugar, and what do you do with them? You mix them together. So that means Kool-Aid is a mixture. And if you do it right, you wind up with a homogeneous mixture. If you put in too much sugar, too much powder, then you could get a heterogeneous mixture because your sugar might sink to the bottom. But no matter what, Kool-Aid is a mixture. Uh, salad, what is a salad? Well, if you got a tomato over here, a piece of lettuce over there, that is definitely a mixture. So these last three here have been mixtures. And then what about air, the air we breathe? Well, the air we breathe, you know that it's not homogenous. How do you know that it's not homogenous? Because, well, let's say you walk by somebody who's wearing perfume, and you can smell their perfume. And then you walk away, and then you don't smell the perfume. So the air is not the same all over. So it is a mixture. And just if you're curious, air is a mixture of mostly nitrogen. There's some oxygen. There's some CO2. And there's, there's some other gases in trace amounts. So air is a mixture. <clears throat> and then uh, what do I have? One more. Energy. What is energy? Energy is, where does energy go on here? Does it fit anywhere? Does it have uh, mass and volume? No, it does not. So energy is not matter. So hopefully these 10 have kind of given you uh, a tip, a few ideas on how to do this. Because uh, one thing I wanted to point out before I go, uh, a homogeneous mixture looks the same all over, right? Yes, it does. And just over here, pure substances are also homogeneous. They're the same all over. So you can't just jump right to pure substances if something looks the same all over. You have to look at some more of the properties.